Hi, this is TH Culhane for Solar Cities at the Bonnekampf in Essen, Germany. We got a couple of new experiments we're working on here to share with you. The first is refining our concept of the Solar Cities Airlift Aeroponics System, the PVC tree, a biomimicry system based on the look of a tree, where the trunk is a 50 millimeter pipe, which we have buried so that it can be planted uh, about 10, 15 centimeters in the ground there and then it opens up into this 100 millimeter pipe so it's very simple it doesn't cost a lot of money because you just have an adapter here that goes from 50 mil up to 100 mil and then we've got these 45 degree elbows that are plugged in and the elbows have a hole drilled in the top and then it's simply stuck but you can see here the airlift aeroponics means that the nutrient solution which comes from the biodigester is dripping down and then it's filling these cups up and so when you actually look, look at over here you can see the water or the fertilizer solution and down here as well and we have to do some tweaking to make sure that all the cups get the solution but um, it is it is basically working as a concept now what you notice from up here is that we have a cup but we have a pipe with an air stone going in and actually no air stone, just a, an air tube. It's just this, this, uh, that's all this is. It's just this, this tube going down to the bottom. And that's what's raining down. And then the cup distributes the water. Uh, we've put some plastic in to try to block the holes. The problem with this cup is it already had all these holes and that was, um, not distributing the water uh, equitably so what we want to do is uh, is actually seal these holes up a bit It'd be better if we had a, a cup that didn't have any holes in the bottom we could drill our own holes so we'll work on ways to make sure that this cup fills every time that the air lifts the fertilizer up but the idea of an airlift aeroponic system is that you're not using a water pump you're using an air pump and the air pump can be some distance from the uh, from the actual aeroponic system, they use very little energy. Uh, not sure how many watts. Yeah, 4.5 watts. So 4.5 watts is very little energy, uh, and you might find that an equivalent water pump might use 20 or 30 watts. So it's about a fifth of the energy. And these have double outputs. And this is for a 300 gallon aquarium. I'm sorry, 300 liter, I guess. APS 300 for a 300 liter aquarium and so we're able to service two uh, PVC trees with this and if you look at this one here if you can't have rigid pipe we actually have just put flexible pipe in and then as the bubbles go down they lift water up or fertilizer solution which then can drip down the sides and into the the holes here. So you can look over here, come on this side. You can see that some of these are actually doing quite well, especially when we put the glass wool or rock wool in with the roots. So I'll unplug this again to show how that's coming through. So it's a nice result. An easy way to do a tower garden and not have to get expensive pumps. And you only need a couple of liters of the fertilizer. Fertilizer is coming from our biodigester. You can see over here in this bucket, it spills out whenever we feed it. So that's how we're getting the fertilizer. And we'll see how many days it lasts before we have to top it off. The other experiment that we want to show you is our solar heated biodigester. That other one is in a greenhouse. This one has an old radiator. We started out using these double radiators, thinking we'd heat more water, these double radiators here. And we painted them black. But the problem was we found out after seven years of operation, the corrosion caused a leak and the leak uh, was impossible to fix because it's somewhere inside here. So from now on, we don't recommend double radiators, even though they're easier to get. A single radiator is better because if it springs a leak, you can find the leak on the back side, on the front side, 
and fix it with epoxy. So a single radiator is better. In this case, the cold water is coming from a jacket of water. You can see here is a thousand liter uh, IBC tank with a 700 liter IBC tank on the inside of it. Now to keep mosquitoes from breeding, I've poured used vegetable oil, a thin sheen, which floats on the top, and that kills the mosquito larvae because their snorkels cannot get air. So they basically drown. The cold water that's in here, and this is just normal water, then flows out from the bottom of the IBC tank here, and it comes in, and it goes into the bottom of the radiator, fills the radiator, and then comes out the top here, and then goes up. And because warm water rises like bubbles, it's important to have it always moving up and have no kinks or sags. Then what you find is that the water in the tank is now at 20.2 in the surrounding jacket, which then transfers that heat to here. But if I actually look at where the water is coming out of the solar collector and I stick the temperature probe in there, then we'll see it begin to rise, if you look on here, and already we're up to 24.1 and it will probably climb some as well. 29, okay, so we've got hotter water. So the water in the jacket was at 19, it's gotten up to 20, but the water coming in is actually 32.4 degrees. And so if the day stays sunny all day, or even hotter, then this temperature will transfer into the water around the biodigester and transfer that heat into the biodigester and then we will seal the top of this to hold that heat in. Actually, we're up at 36.5 right now. So this is a good ice, 37. Right, that's the ideal temperature for a biodigester if we could keep the sun going all day and long enough. It, is, uh, it can get quite hot, the water going in, so we suspect that after a few sunny days, we may be able to heat this entire tank up. The ambient temperature here is 35 in the sun, but here we're almost up to 40 degrees. So this is a favorable result. There's other ways that you can heat the tank. And what I will be doing in Florida is I won't be even making a jacket of water and putting a smaller tank in. I'll just take the slurry right out of the biodigester, pass it through the solar hot water collector and back in. So something to try at home. Certainly if these pipes were insulated, we would have even better performance. When this is sealed completely, we'll have better performance. But, oh, look at that. It's up to 40.7 right now. But, of course, that's not the temperature of the tank. It's the temperature of the hot water coming in here as the cold water is drawn into the solar collector. But it certainly is a, a nice result and shows a lot of promise. The other technique is to put your biodigester in a greenhouse and of course it's painted black and then in this one here there's a window on the south facing side that is also letting sunlight in and helping to heat the tank. So a lot of different ways to go about this. We hope that you will consider building your own biodigester or purchasing a biodigester from Home Biogas uh, in Israel uh, or Hestia Home Biogas in Oregon. There's several companies that make them now. Um, but the idea is that you turn all your food scraps into biogas and liquid fertilizer, and then the liquid fertilizer goes into your vertical airlift aeroponic system and grows plants. So at some point, you are going to see all sorts of plants growing out of here. Thanks. Please do try this at home.